Welcome to Plymouth Cathedral. My name is Deacon Albert Laws, and this is the sixth reflection in our series on Pope Francis's encyclical Fratelli Tutti. In his encyclical, Pope Francis describes dialogue as approaching, speaking, listening, looking at, coming to know and understand one another, and to find common ground. He says, if we want to encounter and help one another, we have to dialogue. Essentially then, dialogue is an encounter between individuals or groups in order to seek the common good, which is why it's so important for Catholic social teaching. Now, the common good does not mean a utilitarian greatest good for the greatest number, but the good in itself, that which helps all humanity to live full human lives. Dialogue, then, is necessary for the united search to discover what is good for all, especially in the spheres of politics, economics and ethics, but also in our everyday lives. It is not, His Holiness says, a feverish exchange of opinions on social networks, frequently based on media information that is not always reliable, mere parallel monologues where we talk at each other, not to each other. Dialogue is not a clash of opposing views in a struggle to force one side to submit under the weight of reasoning, nor does it seek a shallow consensus that has little regard for the truth. Rather, dialogue is an encounter with others who share my dignity, a movement that listens to their voice, tries to understand their concerns, their point of view. Dialogue cares about the truth and humbly admits that another viewpoint may include legitimate convictions and concerns. Dialogue is an encouragement to seek the truth, to articulate positions and values clearly and consistently, to rediscover the meaning of our humanity and the path to a way of living that respects all, not merely some. Dialogue, then, is an essential activity to cultivate if we want to resist the dictatorship of the majority. Just because a viewpoint is popular does not mean that it is good. The goodness of a course of action does not lie in how many people support it or not, but in its adherence to the truth of our humanity. Pope Francis teaches, such dialogue needs to be enriched and illumined by clear thinking, rational arguments, a variety of perspectives and the contribution of different fields of knowledge and points of view. Nor can it exclude the conviction that it is possible to arrive at certain fundamental truths always to be upheld. Dialogue accepts, then, that no one can claim to understand the truth of reality in all its complexity. We are not God. Instead, he purposely created us so that we would need to cooperate in order to thrive. Among ourselves, if we are to search for the truth, if we are to share the truth we already know, we need to dialogue, that is, encounter each other in a spirit of fraternity that does not see someone who holds a different opinion to me as an enemy to be overcome, but as a brother or a sister to converse with. In order to develop a spirit of dialogue, it is essential, therefore, to cultivate the virtue of kindness. Pope Francis tells us that kindness is an attitude that is gentle, pleasant, and supportive, not rude or coarse. It helps make other people's lives more bearable, especially by sharing the weight of their problems, needs, and fears. In any search for the truth, there must be first of all a spirit of trust, and without the virtue of kindness, there can be no trust. 
As Christians, we have before us always the example of Christ himself, who attracted people to himself because he showed them kindness. Through his kindness, he was able to open them up to himself, who is the truth. Pope Francis reminds us that it is our responsibility to cultivate kindness in our communities so that a spirit of cooperative dialogue is fostered, so that the poor and the weak are not overlooked, so that truth and compassion are not experienced as rare moments, but as the norms by which we live our lives.